because he, he taught me those things, like the skills to be able to communicate with people. And when you guys go to the programs, when you're interviewing in a program, you're going to be able to actually face to face with the program director. And I was terrified to do that because number one, I grew up in a, in a different country. Number two, my, my English, is not, English is not my first language. Number three, I always felt like I'm competing with these MDs from UCLA, so on and so forth, and I'm, they probably think I'm less qualified. That's not the case. You know, you'll be surprised. Like for you guys, like that DO thing, I work with a lot of DOs and they're a lot more qualified than a lot of the MDs that I work with. So when you guys go to, go to an interview, just be very confident, be able to communicate effectively, looking at, at your interviewer's face, paraphrasing, like summarizing, like, you know, it's funny, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share something, something really funny. When I was here, I knew nothing about this business of interviewing, nothing. Why? Because in my country, you get a job, you get a spot in med school if you're, if you're top of your class. That's it. There's no interviewing, there's no volunteering, there's no fundraisers, no, none of the things that, that we do here in America. So you go there because you're, you're very dedicated and you're a very good student. And then the same thing, you go to residency because you score the highest into your, in, in your residency exam. So that's, that's, that it comes down to you're the, you're the book smart guy. Here is quite different. Here you get into a residency program, not only because you have the knowledge, and the knowledge, they know that already because they already have a, a letter from your dean and they already have a very standardized process to know who you are. If you score in your USMLEs, whatever the number is, they already know what kind of material they're getting. But what they don't know is who you are as a person. Are you well-rounded? Are you pleasant? Are you able to, to, to conduct conversations? Are you able to be a team player? So all of those things, nobody teaches you those things. Nobody, nobody. So when I was here, he actually asked one of his patients, who is um, his very close friends, he actually asked Mr. Rush, he, I don't know if he's still around, but he asked Mr. Rush, like, I want you to train Eduardo. This guy, is a, he's a Hollywood director. So the guy, basically, he's done famous movies. He's, he knows all the stars. So the guy came here to the office. He wasn't here back then. Back then, we, we had another office. So he brought his equipment, and he started, like, interviewing me interviewing me like that. You're, you're going to be in, f in front of the program director. And he was scolding me. He was telling me like, you're moving your head too much. I still do, but, <laughs> but there's nothing I can do about it. Maybe, maybe during those days my head was like this. But, <laughs> but I've been told like so many times that you move your head so much. But anyway, so simple things like that, like take out your hands out of your pockets, like the, your, your body language, your body posture, your ability to, to look at me, you know, all, nobody taught me those things but him. Nobody taught me, like this guy, like, like he, he really made it for me. Like, like the letters of recommendation, the way he wrote it, the way he, he gave me the confidence when I went to interview in that program. I, I told you guys, I got a letter of rejection from UCLA. And then he called one of, the, one of his colleagues that, that, that he knew from Tarzana and ask him, like, you have to interview Eduardo. I know you guys don't take, don't take FMGs, International Medical Graduates, but you have to interview this guy. So I got an invitation to interview the last day, the, last, the very last day of that season. I never forget, it was January 31st, 2007. So I went in, that was the very last day, and then because he called, he called the program director. So <laughs> I got, you know, you always get two people to interview you when you go to these interviews. It's a, it's a very stressful thing. So, a lot of the times is the resident is one of them, the, re the senior residents are doing the interviews, and a lot of times is one of the key faculties, right? So I got interviewed by the program director and by the assistant program director. And when I walked in, when I walked in with the program director, and she told me, like, I had to interview you myself because I've heard so many good things about you that I wanted to, to, to know who you were. And I was like, Literally, I was dying there. Like, literally, I, like, like, I didn't know what to tell this lady. I was so stressed out. But I started, like, thinking about, like, like, he had me record myself in front of the mirror. He told me to buy a recorder. I was recording myself. And, like, listen to it. Like, oh, that sounded terrible. I need to improve this. So, I'm telling you guys, it's like, it's like you're studying for a test. The same thing with interviewing. And he gave me the confidence to understand that that person that was sitting next to me, I, my classmates, I had people going from Yale, I had another person going from Harvard. He made me realize that 
my medical education was in no way inferior and the experiences that I learned working in this office for three and a half years made me so strong made me so strong that I had nothing to fear with this guy that was sitting next to me that went to the you know IV school of medicine and you know it turned out that way like it's funny because when I left the one of the guys there told me like if you if you were interviewed by by Dr. Wally that means you're getting the spot and I you know, I ranked him first. I was ready to make the ultimate sacrifice. And my wife was doing a doctorate at the time and we couldn't really move out of state. The ultimate sacrifice was going to USC, which is a pretty hard program in terms of like, back then, I don't know how it is now, but they he had a lot of scut work and bad reputation from that aspect. I was gonna go to USC because I knew, I knew I probably would get a spot there. And then I was able to match there. And, and I did very well there. I, you know, I, I was there for five years and, from seven, seven out of seven awards during those five years, I, I received all the awards from the program. And like I, like I told you guys, I never really felt, I felt like he really made it for me because he gave me the knowledge, the confidence, the, the work ethics, like working long hours. And I know you, you probably, if you think this is hard, you don't know what real life is because residence is even harder than this. Internship is even harder than this. And real life is even harder than this. I have colleagues that they, they work 120 hours a week. And I'm not kidding you, I'm not lying to you. I was just talking to one of them yesterday about like, like, like how these, these businesses, especially if you're going into surgery, you're, you're gonna be working a lot of hours, a lot of hours. That's one of, the, one of the things about surgery. So for me, like after this experience, like I gained so much in terms of like, work ethics, uh, um, bedside manners, uh, physician skills, like medical knowledge skills, because back then he also had people come and teach me, like, like, like doctors that, that were like, like building me, like, like what I'm trying to do with you guys, building you guys to be, to be ready when the time comes. He, back then I had the same opportunity in this practice. I had like people coming here and teaching me things that I didn't know, like, like, like management of conditions that I didn't know because my, my medical education was my medical education and here was a different expectation and I'm not delivering babies here, I, I'm doing different things here. So to me I felt like this experience was very hard, very, very, very hard at the beginning and then I realized like, man, this, this, this job is really taking me where I need to be and it takes time to realize those things. It's not just something that comes right away but I want you guys to to, to feel like you guys are in, in, a, in a very good place, guided by a very good person, and in, he, will he will do whatever for you guys to be able to get into the program. Because I saw that not only with me, I witnessed that for the three and a half years that I was here. Every person that came here that actually showed interest and respect and, and love for this practice, he helped that person get whatever that person needed to go. And I saw that many, numerous, numerous, numerous times with Western University students and with some of us, like, like foreign medical grads that were here, like we, all, we, we were all, all able to get into programs and fulfilling our dream to becoming doctors in this country, which is not easy. Like 45% of the FMGs don't make it. 55% of the FMGs that already passed this, the three, the, the, the step one, step two, step three, all those things, 55% don't make it. So. So I want you guys to, to realize that you have a great opportunity. Enjoy it. You know, I don't know you guys if you're meeting with the uh, other doctors uh, or like like learning from other doctors, but just learn from him, learn from the patients, and and learn learn from this this experience. You're gonna how how many more weeks do you guys have? Um, this is towards the end of our second, yeah. second week, so we have two more weeks. Two more weeks. Enjoy it. Enjoy it and pass it along with the other doctors that come here. You know, like from your school, I don't know if you know, you guys talk to each other, I'm sure you do. It's a big class, right? How many students do you guys have? 220 in our class. Oh. How many? 220. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> when I started med school, we were 54. Only 25 we, we were able to graduate. Wow. The, other, the other ones, like, like seven years, they, they started dropping and changing careers. And yeah, 225, boy, that's a big class. They're, they're actually, we heard they're opening up two new medical schools in California. They are. Because they're having such a shortage of primary well, one, care doctors. One of them is, is where, I, where I work. I'm actually signed up for B faculty there, Kaiser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And then the other one, Arrowhead, I don't know what it is. Arrowhead? That's Good. what we heard. This yeah. is what we heard. We don't know if it's Great. True.
the, the one at Kaiser is uh, projected for 2019. So, but anyway, I, th I feel like you guys can, can really use your time to build up your skills and, and start practicing on your, on your interviewing. On, you know what I would recommend is that you, you actually write down your, your essay, your, no, your, your, your CV, and just have Dr. Benson review it because he did it for me. He actually, you know, like for me, like, like I said, Spanish is my first language. So for me, writing an, 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 a CV, like an essay and, and everything, like, like, uh, like a letter of interest, for me it was very hard because that's not my first language. I have the ideas, so he helped me build it up. He built it up for me and he told me like, put this, don't put this. He corrected it how many times? I cannot tell you, he did it like probably like, I'm not kidding you, like probably more than 50 times he corrected it. And it was great because I knew he was, he was exactly building me to present me the way he wanted to present me. Like I'm telling you guys, we know in the US, I was, I was faculty at UCLA and well, when I decided to move to Kaiser, we know that the, the accepting process, the admitting process in the U.S. is very standardized. I already know that I'm comparing apples with apples. When we interview, when the people that we interview at all of you, we, all, we knew that, that what kind of class we were getting. So we wanted like this number of students. We, we were bringing 100 students we knew. What we care about is who is this guy as a person? Or how is this guy presenting his case? Because a lot of these kids, like they were book smart, and you talk to them and they were off, completely off. They, they, the way, you know, their personalities, you can tell like from that brief interaction, we would meet, faculty would meet after, it's like, oh, this guy was off. I mean, I think we should get this guy. And for you guys, the more important thing is you build, you build who you are, like where you want to go. You know, these are, this is what I've done throughout my medical education. These are the letters of recommendation, the people that they really know me. And, and again, I only have one letter of recommendation from my U.S. physician. That was him. The other two letters were from my, my attendants. But for, for the program here, they don't know what they're getting. You know what I mean? Like, like, oh, this guy was like top of his class. But what do you mean top of his class? We don't know what this guy is. But now in the U.S., like for you guys, they're going to know who you are. But like the difference, you will make a difference is the way you interview and the way you build up and you present your case. So that's why if you're here, if you want to have him, he will help you. He will vary with his heart. He will review it. He will correct it. He'll do whatever he needs to do to make sure that it he, he looks like a strong case. And uh, especially if you're interested in staying in this city, it's quite competitive, quite competitive. I don't know if you guys are from here or from different places, but getting a spot in LA, it's very challenging. Yeah. So enjoy your experience. This is you're gonna you're gonna be here two more weeks and and you're never gonna learn the kind of stuff that I learned here. You're never gonna learn in an other doctor's office. They may show you like little things here, medical things, but no one no one taught me like non medical things. And that's actually what you need to be able to to succeed in this business. Is your work ethics, your patient physician interaction, your communication skills, all those things nobody teach you about that, but that's what you need. Okay? Very good. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. So I'll, I'll hope I see you guys again, and I'll ask Dr. Benzer if uh, if I if I should come some other day. I'm um, I'm pretty much off because we we had another baby. So Congratulations. yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have a baby girl. So I'm a daddy now. We have a baby girl. <laughs> Is it our third baby, yeah. We have I have two boys and and a baby baby girl. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, oh, you were still here. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank. You. I park in your spot, Dr. Venter. <laughs> Is it still?